Howdy. There are a ton of unorthodox fast foods out there, but what are the freakiest? Most of these are part of the fabled fast food chain secret menus, so not every restaurant is even willing to make them. But perhaps there's a good reason these foods are off the menu. I mean, perhaps they're just ludicrously butt ugly. Or perhaps they reveal to us a breakdown in reason and sanity, with decadence and excess to the limits of all logic and rationality. Well, either way, I love talking fast foods, so let's check them out. These are the 10 most disturbing fast foods. No preamble today, let's just begin. Number 10. The Double Smash Donut Burger. Oh, I saw this one and I was like, we gotta talk about this one. Down in my country, Australia, we have a Melbourne eatery called Easy's. Here was where we created this deranged volcanic eruption of savory and sweet. We smother a giant pink donut designed for 10 people with barbecue sauce. Ew. We dump the giant patties on that. We then layer that with copious bacon slices. We then layer that with a truckload of diamond cut chips. And of course, we follow that up with a topping of cheesy mac and cheese. And finally, drench that with cheese sauce. Ew. But of course, it wouldn't be a burger unless we top that with a giant pink icing donut top. Layered with copious M&Ms, because why not, I guess? And by the cosmos, I think we're finally done. The UK Daily Mail described this donut burger thing as... A perfect mix of savoury and sweet. Personally, I'd call it a transparent assassination attempt on diners. But hey, maybe it could be enjoyed at a big party or something. Easy says it's meant to be eaten by around six people. And it was priced at 130 Australian dollars, which equals around 85 US dollars. So honestly, given the amount of prep for this, not a bad price. There's also a smaller, equally ugly, more normal sized version priced at $30. And for number nine, the Hungry Jack's Real Cheeseburger. The Cheeseburger. It's one of, if not the most recognized item on the fast food menu. And melted cheese on a sandwich is an easy crowd pleaser. So Burger King had a bright idea. Why not put 20 slices of processed cheese on a bun and then melt them? I mean, clearly cheese is the best thing ever. That's it, cheese. No need for meat or sauce, just the cheese. Cheese is everything, all praise the cheese. And this is what we get from that, the real cheeseburger. 20 slices of cheese. I don't think I'm being a health nut by saying this is a little overkill. At first you might think, obviously this is an American food, they love their cheese. But surprisingly, this alarming eyesore actually originated in Thailand. It's odd because cheese is apparently still quite rare in the Thailand market. So perhaps Thailand appreciates the novelty of this excessively cheesy burger. What is this strange yellow plastic-like substance Americans coat all their food in? Let's try using 10 times as much as them on our burger. When Burger King Thailand released this monstrosity, some people actually thought it was a joke, but I don't blame them. It just seemed too bizarre for your average Thai to consider eating. But from what I can translate, Burger King Thailand had this to say about it. This is no joke. This is real. The real cheeseburger is full of flavor for those who love cheese. While Google Translate didn't work great on Thailand Facebook comments, it does seem like many Thai people found it a fun novelty. And it shows in sales, because this thing was apparently a huge hit. But for all its media hype, taste-wise, this thing turned out to be a major disappointment. You see, despite all its cheesy glory, it was found in the end to be a dry, unmelted mass of culinary disgrace. In a particularly damning review, Eric said, It sucks. It's horrid. It's really no surprise though. It's literally a bun and 20 slices of cheese. No sauce. Two mouthfuls was all I could stomach before throwing it out. Well, yeah, looking at it, you could probably guess it tastes like flavored styrofoam, but you know, props to you for giving it a shot. Marielle tried it too, and they said, it was slightly salty, but also had a blandness to it at the same time. When I had bitten only twice, it turned into a single block of coagulated cheese. After that, it was too dry. I couldn't eat it. Ugh, that really paints a picture. Looking back, Burger King Thailand probably needed to reevaluate the question. How much cheese is too much cheese? But as far as they're concerned, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Number eight, 
Tim Hortons Buffalo Crunch Donut. Described by some news outlets as monstrous. Described by others as the Frankenstein swimming pool. Honestly, it's hard to figure out what we're actually looking at here. A deep fried chicken schnitzel donut? Well, not quite. This is apparently a spicy donut drenched in chicken wing sauce and smothered in kettle chips, with tortilla strips swimming in buffalo sauce in the center. I guess it's a sort of buffalo flavored chip donut? It's ugly, it, it's definitely ugly. It's like they mashed together all the bad ideas from Tim Hortons and all the bad ideas from Hungry Jack's to make one single grotesque savory disaster. And that kind of makes sense because this was made around the time that Burger King merged with Tim Hortons. Apparently, many Americans were flipping out over Burger King buying Tim Hortons and moving to Canada. The news channel B60 thought this was Tim Hortons peace offering. How do they put it? But maybe this creation is the donut chain's peace offering to let the states know everything is gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay, huh? Honestly, if I was given this disfigured chicken Dorito abomination, I'd personally assume the sun was about to explode and doom us within the next 20 seconds. Anthony, a franchisee of three Tim Hortons shops, was one of the first to feature this unique promotional experiment. And when he was interrogated, he had this to say. It's all current Tim Hortons products that we've just had a bunch of fun with. Well, hopefully it's more fun to taste than it is to look at. How did it taste anyway? According to the National Post, It tastes like a chicken wing, though it doesn't contain any meat ingredients. Other responses to the donut were mixed. Is Canada mocking us with this f***ing donut? What are you Canute guys doing up there? Leave our food mashups alone! But I think this was a one-time novelty, as I couldn't find any record of Tim Hortons introducing something quite so bizarre ever again. And maybe that's for the best. And for seven, lucky seven. The Burger King New York Pizza Burger. Let's say it's dinner or lunchtime and you feel like a treat, but you can't decide between a pizza or a burger. Burger King said, why not have both? Good Let's say hello to Burger King New York Pizza Burger. Hello! Burger King is most famously known as the home of the Whopper. And this pizza burger hybrid thing truly is a Whopper, arranged on a nine and a half inch bun. This burger pizza is cut into six slices and filled with a pound of Whopper patties, pepperoni, mozzarella, and Tuscan pesto. You could probably have guessed, but this dreadful deformity is not too healthy. No, really, do you think? In fact, it's a whopping 2,500 calories and would take about 15 miles or 25 kilometers for me to run off. But nutritional concerns aside, I gotta compliment the aesthetics of this thing. As we see with a cheeser, I think some fast food hybrids don't work, but I really think this one does. It does feel like a burger, yet the way it's sliced and put together, it feels like a pizza at the same time. And just looking at it, I gotta say, it does look pretty appetizing. That doesn't necessarily mean I want a slice, but visually, I really appreciate this. Maybe just one slice, though. Which I guess works, as Burger King apparently considered this a shared meal. And yeah, pizza's an easy food to share around with friends. According to the Burger King vice president at the time, This pizza burger is homage to its New York home. I must emphasize that this is intended to be shared. Don't just eat it yourself, you greedy bum. Yeah, okay, he didn't say that last part, but it would have been funny. Anyway, how'd the pizza burger actually taste? Many reviewers said the same thing I did. This burger pizza looks impossibly good. One Burger King fan tasted it and was delighted by the feast. They said, I was surprised. It conveys both burgerness and pizzaness in a single bite. The liquid smoke flavor of a Whopper and the pizza spices of a pizza were both there. Yum! And they weren't alone. In fact, the pizza burger went on to international popularity. Over in Japan, the pizza burger made a big splash at Xmas time. And when Patrick tried it with his family, he had this to say. Uh, uh... No, 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 different Patrick. It's delicious in a regret-filled way. Yeah, personally, I think I'll pass. I know this sounds crazy, but maybe one day I could have a pizza, and another day I could have a burger. And for number six, Arby's Meat Mountain. Arby's, you want the meats? Well, we definitely got the meats here. Like many fast food chains, many people claim that Arby's has a secret menu, 
and on this secret menu is the ultimate meat mountain of a burger. According to the website Hack the Menu, it's a very popular secret menu option. And as we'll soon see, some Arby's actually make it daily. I kind of respect how simple this burger is. It's not got any complicated twist or excess of sauces. It's not some weird hybrid. It's just a burger with every single type of meat they have stacked on top of each other. With cheese on top, because you gotta have cheese. And it all results in this truly hideous mass of flesh. I mean, by jeebus is it ugly. This is what I imagine an eldritch horror would look like if it somehow turned itself into a burger. Can we even call this a burger though? When I saw Matt Stoney on YouTube take on this mountain of meat, one of his commenters pointed out, He calls it a burger, but there's almost every meat on it except for a burger. Let's peer further inside this fleshy monster though. How's it actually made? They start the base of this mountain with chicken tenders. They top that with roast turkey, ham and cheese. They top that with brisket, corned beef, Angus steak, more cheese, and the mountain is only truly complete when they top it off with bacon. But let's take a bite out of this eldritch monster. How's it taste? Well luckily, KBD tried this one out and he seemed to order it without any issue from his local Arby's for $10. 13 dollars 15 with a drink, not a bad deal. And the staff said they get orders of it once or twice a day. So clearly some Arby's do have it on the secret menu. Unlike me, KBD didn't seem to mind how unsightly it looked. Taste-wise, this is what he said. When you bite through it, you get cold meat and then hot meat. Your mouth is very confused by the end of it. The taste is great, but by the last couple of bites, I thought I was gonna throw up. Obviously, I don't recommend this 1,275 calorie sandwich as a regular dietary staple, but if you would like to order one for the novelty, this is what Hack The Menu recommends. At your local Arby's, ask politely if they serve the meat mountain. If they don't know what it is yet, you can ask for a sandwich filled with every type of meat they serve with some cheese thrown in. Sounds good. Well, it doesn't sound good, but it does sound meaty. Arby's, we have the meat. Number five, whoa. The White Castle Mozzarella Cheese Sticks. These cheese sticks may look innocent enough, but they have a devious undercover secret. Imagine a pack of 10 fries. Probably sounds pretty pathetically small, doesn't it? Imagine if this 10 pack of fries was somehow 1,500 calories alone and 111 grams of fat. That would be a nasty surprise, but that's not possible, is it? Well, this pack of fries packs a major punch. And it's not like it's not tempting to eat a whole bag of these things. Look at them. You can just imagine them jumping up and down in the box going, Pick me! Pick me! So, is it worth it? How do they taste? According to Random Topics, Awesome, but they need marinara sauce. So essentially, he's saying these 150 calorie sticks need more calories on them to have any flavor. I feel like mozzarella sticks should probably not be so flavorless that you need to drench them in more flavor. But with sauce, he gave them a 7.9 out of 10. The channel Should You said they prioritized the pull of the cheese stick. What's he think of the taste? It's tangy and bitter at the same time, but I like it. Eight out of 10. So what does White Castle have to say about this disturbing amount of calories in their fries? One serving is 3.3 sticks. Oh sure, because when I get a pack of fries, I have 3.3 fries, then throw the rest away. White Castle, that is a terrible serving size. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Well fine then. My recommendation is, if your food has 111 grams of fat and still can't manage any flavor, then maybe we're eating the wrong foods. Ooh, something from overseas. Number four. Maximum one pound beef burger and King Yeti from Burger King Japan. We don't always notice it in the West, but the East gets some crazy fast foods. So let's travel to Japan to look at their Burger King. They have a steadfast tradition of offering way bigger than necessary burgers. Let's start with this maximum one pound beef burger. This oversized coronary concern has four patties, four cheese slices, four slices of bacon, mayo, pickles, and onion. In fact, these one pound burgers are such a tradition, they actually made a Burger King all you can eat competition for them. This super one pound beef burger challenge costs 2,900 yen, which is around 20 USD. 
Each contestant is given a 45 minute time limit to chow down on their burgers. Once a burger is completely consumed, they move on to the next burger. The winner of this competition is invited to a commemorative event once they stop throwing up. The King Yeti is the equally troubling counterpart. This is the four beef patty, six slices of cheese and sauce drenched version. The whole thing is about half a kilo heavy and comes in at a cool 1590 calories. So more kilojoules than your average full size pizza. They've sure got an eye for visuals though, don't they? This King Yeti is a bit like a tiger at a zoo. I'd rather appreciate it from a distance than actually touch it. On a side note, this burger sells for about 1750 yen, which means in US dollars it's about a $15 burger. To put that in perspective, your average cheeseburger in the USA costs about $2.50 on average. I know that's not a perfect contrast, but it really puts in perspective just how much cheaper and easier it is to buy takeaway in America. I don't necessarily think that's a good thing, just interesting. Anyway, Japan had a whole bunch of these burgers, like the Teriyaki Tower Burger, named after the Tokyo Tower, the second largest structure in Japan. Apparently it had more of a tangy taste. Yet another version was the Strong Magma One Pound Burger, aka the spiciest meat wall. Yeah, Japan culture does love its spice. What about the taste though? Lucky for us, Tokyo Drew tried the Strong Magma during his time in Japan. If you look at this, it's big enough that it almost matches the size of his head. At first, Drew was put off by the spiciness, but when he bit in, this is what he said. It's a lot of beef at once. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this an 8. They even gave me a sticker upon eating it saying, I did it! I ate the one pound beef burger! Yay! Well, it is an achievement. I don't think my stomach could handle that much beef at once. Nice. nice. And coming up, number 3. In-N-Out Roadkill Fries. On a side note, this is nothing against In-N-Out, as I hear they treat their staff really well. Apparently, they pay them better than most other fast food chains. They also offer them medical, dental, and vision benefits. So props to them. I wish more fast food chains would treat their staff this well. Anyway, it might not surprise you that this roadkill fries is not offered at every In-N-Out restaurant. Its name is not a favorite among some people. And frankly, this is just hideous to look at. And the only real nutritional value I can see to it is the good head of protein. This literal mushing together of multiple menu items into one detritus junk pile is what I call a real frankenfood. But just how did we get to whatever this is? Well, despite In-N-Out always keeping their fries fresh and never frozen, the fries still has a reputation for being a little bland. In fact, the LA Times ranked them as the worst fast food fries in all of USA. That's pretty harsh criticism. So because of this, In-N-Out has a reputation for dumping an inordinate wad of ingredients on top of their fries. To the point where it's more like an excessive clump of mashy, greasy junk that just happens to include fries at the bottom. And never is this more apparent than with the roadkill fries. They start by making their animal style fries, which I gotta say is a fine funky name. I don't know, animal style, it's just got some teeth to it, you know, I love it. The animal style fries is a traditional fries drenched in oodles of melted cheese, smothered by a layer of grilled onions, all drowned in another layer of Thousand Island dressing. What makes it roadkill fries is when they complete this exuberant artery failure with a flying Dutchman. No, 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 no. This flying Dutchman is a pure meat burger. Basically, they dump beef patty burgers stuffed with onions and cheese stuffed with all the other ingredients on top of their fries, leaving us with this. And as I mentioned, there's been some controversy with this fries meal, and some In-N-Out locations just don't make roadkill fries anymore. One Reddit user tried ordering them and they told them this. I'm sorry, we aren't able to make those because it may jeopardize our quality, but you're welcome to order the ingredients separate and add them yourself. It might jeopardize their quality? I wonder what they mean. I mean, it'll obviously jeopardize a person's health, but I have a feeling anyone asking for roadkill fries probably knows what they're getting into. Ah yes, number two, the monster size double cheese double donut burger from Hungry Horse. Ugh, what ludicrous physiological nightmare is this? Well, one physiologist labeled it the heart attack on a plate. They spoke out strongly against this fatty flob of evil. Hungry Horse, the UK creators of this colon nightmare, 
tag it with a catchphrase, so wrong it's right. Well, I definitely agree with the wrong part. We start with a glazed donut, top that with beef, top that with cheese, top that with more beef, and yet more cheese, and top that with four slabs of bacon, and smother it all in barbecue sauce. So basically, an even more overkill Luther burger. Grubhub checked the nutritional information, and come on, what are we really expecting? It's not like it's gonna have the calories of a shred of cabbage, I'm sure it'll be terrible. Apparently it comes out at a fine total of 1,966 calories, 125 grams of fat, with 50 3 grams of saturated fat. I hope I'm not considered a health nut by saying maybe skip out on the Luther burger. How about a lean steak or a banana? In fact, you could have 200 bananas and still not get nearly as much fat as you get from this gut-busting horror. Though 200 bananas might get you a bit sick. I don't recommend eating that many bananas. You'll probably like explode banana. Ew. Anyway, taste time. I couldn't find a taste test of this exact burger, but it's not far from a Luther burger with cheese. Basically the same, just an extra patty. At least this way they can actually get their mouth around the burger. Luckily, healthy junk food tried it out, and this is what they said. It's sweet and savory and cheesy and it's conflicting. It seems this might not be that legendary sweet and savory harmony I've heard so much about. I mean, this poor fella's face really says it all, doesn't it? And last but certainly not least, number one. The In-N-Out 100 by 100. Let's return to the fabled secret menu. In ancient times, in the days of 2006, In-N-Out had an unadvertised extra secret menu item. A burger where you can order as many beef patties and cheese as you like. Often people would use this to order the well-known 3x3, which contained three layers of beef and three layers of cheese. You might even get a few 4x4s and 5x5s. Maybe they get really crazy and they order the 20x20 burger. Armando and his friends tried the 20 by 20 out. Nowadays, the rules are stricter and stuff are only allowed to make a 4x4 max. So instead, they ordered a 4x4 with 8 Flying Dutchmans. It's a patty burger, so basically just the filling for the 20x20. 20 20. But then we get to the most disturbing of all. The 100 by 100. Yeah, someone actually managed to order this successfully. Back in 2006, the rules were looser, so they could just walk up to the counter and say, I'd like a 100 by 100 burger. And they get one. I mean, just look at this thing. When it was ordered, What Up Willie said the staff were shocked. The biggest order they had before that was a 24 by 24. So being very resourceful, the staff jerry-rigged a bunch of boxes together. And finally, after much cooking and hard work, they completed the masterpiece. I think Willie summed it up quite well. It's one set of buns and 100 meat patties and 100 pieces of sweaty, oily cheese in between the buns. Clearly, the worst part of this experience wasn't the meat. It was all the sweaty cheese. And you can definitely see the issue he's talking about here. By the time he and his seven friends are halfway done, it's not a pretty sight. They soon became deeply nauseated. Not because they were full, but because of an endless trail of sweaty cheese. And who can blame them? But you know, I discovered in later research, in 2019, Molly Schuyler was an absolute force of nature and finished off a full in and out 100 by 100 thereby setting a world record. I will never know how that giant burger fit into such a small human. But props to you and your willpower, Molly. That is amazing. Anyway, nutrition-wise. Now obviously, the nutrition information isn't listed here. But Willie and I both did the math on it, and we both came up with similar results. It's easy enough. We just take one Flying Dutchman, which is two burger patties and two cheese, and we times that 380 calories by 50. This means the 100 by 100 is about 19,000 calories. Willie counted 19,490, so we're both close enough. Give or take the buns. Now, although I would most certainly be sick before even managing a quarter of this burger, just for funsies, let's say I somehow did down 19,490 calories. Just how much jogging would I need to do to burn that off? Why, that would take me 1,542 minutes, or 26 hours of non-stop running to burn it off. That translates to about 154 miles. But there's something I don't understand. Huh? What's that, hon? 
How is someone supposed to get their mouth around this thing? A burger should be able to be eaten with your hands. Yeah, fair point. I guess I'd personally just eat it patty by patty. But at that point, it's not really a burger, is it? Just a disturbing collection of bad life decisions. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. And you know, this only scratched the surface of the many bafflingly strange fast foods across the world. So if you've got your own freaky fast food, feel free to mention in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. What? Today we have two member questions. For number one, Light Fury Dragon asks, Do I plan to do reviews on sit-down restaurants? Oh, you mean like Olive Garden and the Cheesecake Factory? If there's interest, I'd gladly talk about them. I really enjoyed researching my shutdown restaurants video. I might put restaurants in a future poll and see if subscribers have any interest. Mostar asks, has Nin, my wife, ever introduced me to a cartoon or changed my view on a show? While it's not a cartoon, I recently showed her the nine main Star Wars movies for the first time. And upon re-watching, we actually both found we liked the final three movies best. For all their plot holes, we enjoyed the characters in the Disney movies the most. Finn, Ray, and Poe are a lot of fun. Still though, some absolutely timeless moments in the original three movies. No disrespect.